This is a podcast from the Nuffield Department of Medicine. Professor Tim Key tells us about the role of lifestyle and diet in the development of cancer. Hello Tim. Translational medicine aims to translate findings at the bench into better treatments for patients. Another way can be to avoid becoming ill. Should today's education and medicine work on prevention rather than a cure? We definitely need to do both those approaches. So for prevention, the first thing is that we need to apply the knowledge we already have better. I mean, probably the most well-known example for cancer is smoking, and smoking rates have come down, lung cancer rates have come down too, so that's great, but there's still a long way to go. So more effort is needed applying the knowledge we have. The other thing in prevention is getting more knowledge to allow us to to find out other ways of preventing disease. So we're talking today about diet and cancer, and that is a prime area where there's a lot of evidence that something's going on, but we haven't yet worked out all the details, and so we need to put in the the effort in the research to find out what can be done. And coming back to your introduction about um, cure and treatment, our work on the causes of cancer can relate back to developing treatment because if you understand the cause of the disease better that may make it clear where treatment could be applied. What are the most important approaches that have developed in the past 10 years? In the the whole field of diet and cancer the two things that have come through in the last 10 years that are absolutely definitely true and really matter are that both obesity and high intakes of alcohol increase the risk for several types of cancer. So that's that's really important information that we have. In terms of other dietary factors, a lot of research has been done looking at various foods such as fruit and vegetables, meat, dairy products, and also vitamins and minerals. And the results of that have been much less clear. Uh, Two high-profile ideas have been that high intakes of meat may increase the risk for bowel cancer and conversely high intakes of fibre may reduce the risk. But for neither of those is the evidence absolutely clear as to you know, whether they really matter. In terms of the work we're doing here in Oxford, the, our most exciting area is in hormones, which now we've shown are clearly related to the risk for, for breast cancer in women and prostate cancer in men, and we're now working on working out how diet affects levels of hormones. Does a healthy lifestyle reduce the risk of developing cancer? Well, of course, it's been known for many years that you know, smoking is the most important for, um, cause of cancer, so not smoking is the first thing to do. For people who don't smoke, then they have to start worrying about other things, and in terms of lifestyle, you know, obesity and alcohol are both important, so people should avoid obesity and limit alcohol intake. And there are other things that are also important, like avoiding sunburn and taking up vaccination and screening. Why does your line of research matter? Why should we put money into it? The field of diet and cancer has proved more difficult than we thought to sort out. But despite the, you know, the inconsistencies in the evidence we have at the moment, there is still a lot of evidence suggesting that diet does matter, particularly for some types of cancer, such as cancer of the bowel. So we do need to continue this work to sort out what really is true. And that may result in being able to give people really strong advice that will have a material effect in reducing their risk of getting cancer. Alternatively, it may show that some things just don't matter and people can stop worrying about certain things that they may may or may not want to eat. And I'm very optimistic at the moment because the, the new generation of studies that we've now got in place, which are really large to give re- robust evidence and include things like blood measures as well as dietary questionnaires, should you know, give us much better information than has been available before and allow us to sort out this field. Thank you, Tim.